We know that we face a huge economic crisis and that the cost of sight loss and blindness and other eye conditions is estimated to cost the UK economy 36 billion annually. And that is why I believe it is vital that the government recognises the crisis in eye health right now and sees that we are in a state of an emergency. We are two and a half years on from a pandemic where we have seen that many people missed out on their appointments, thousands of people in fact, and now we're facing huge backlogs. Um, over 640,000 people are actually waiting to see an eye care specialist. And you've got to kind of tack that on, on the back of the fact that at the moment, ophthalmology is probably one of the most busiest outpatient clinics within the NHS. We know that by having a strategy for other diseases can actually really have a true impact and make a difference. And that is why I'm really pleased to share today that I will be bringing forward a bill to Parliament on a national eye health strategy for England. And my bill will improve the quality of life for people with sight loss address the health inequalities and link up patient pathways for overall improved health outcomes. What I want to see happening with the bill that I'm hoping to bring forward is how we can stop the fragmentation of the types of eye care and high health treatment, address the kind of the workplace capacity challenges, but also tackling the issues around some of the health inequalities that also exist. Because, you know, across in our nation, so in Scotland and in Wales, we already have strategies that appear to be working well, and I would like to see us in England adopt some of that best practice to ensure that regardless of where you live in our country, you will be able to receive good eye care treatment. Secondary care continues to struggle to cope with demand and the financial cost, as we're saying, of vision loss and blindness is huge. It's estimated at £36 billion to the UK economy every year. That would be enough almost to fill the current financial gap. £36 billion is a lot of money. I think the stats and the data really speak for themselves. When we think about the backlog at the moment, we say it's, I mean, it's over 640,000 people. That is currently 10% of the current NHS waiting list backlog. That is huge. But it's about making sure that eye health and eye care is no longer seen as the poor relation, as I call it. It is seen as a priority. I don't like to draw comparisons with other diseases, but ultimately eye health should really be up there with the rest of them. And so doing events like this, but raising awareness amongst my parliamentary colleagues is going to be crucial to this. The stark reality is that unless we take coordinated action now, we will see more people in our communities put at risk and suffer irreversible sight loss. I'll be presenting it for its first reading in three, in three weeks time and really I'm hoping to get a lot of the industry support for it and also the voluntary sector but then the key really we're working on government to want to kind of take that bill on board and look to introduce um, an eye health strategy because you know I mentioned earlier uh, this year that I'd actually raised the issue with uh, the government because I was really quite surprised that we don't have a strategy of this nature. Uh, and I wasn't obviously happy with the response, which is why I'm taking matters into my own hands and I'll be campaigning on this issue to see if we can bring about that change for people uh, living with sight loss. We know, in, you know, we know that 50% of all uh, sight loss is avoidable. That's a huge number. And so that means a lot of people are losing their sight unnecessarily. We need to change that because I don't believe that should continue. We know what the stats are, you know, every day, 250 people begin to lose their sight. And if we don't take action now, we know that number is going to double by 2050. That is 500 people every day beginning to lose their sight. And when we know that sight loss is avoidable, that, that tells me we've got to take action. Community optometry does remain the front line for patients with urgent eye care needs. But the good news is that there is a united view within the eye care sector now. The presidents of both the Royal College of Ophthalmologists and the College of Optometrists, they have produced a joint vision statement setting out how primary and secondary care providers can work together. Now I can tell you today, and if anyone knows me, you will know that I will not give up. I will continue to press the government to deliver a better standard of eye care and deliver change that really will transform the lives of so many others.